the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. There is a problem nowadays with almost all of us. At when we look at our spiritual life and try to assess it, we always come back with a conclusion of that we are so cold in our spirituality. Sometimes when we recall our relationship in the past with God, we find that instead of moving forward and getting better in our relationship with the Lord, in fact, we are going backward. And I tell you one of the main issues that's raised during confessions most of the time is that people come and say, Abuna, I don't know what happened to my spirituality. I come to church, I take communion, I read the Bible, I pray, but I don't find that I'm growing spiritually, and I don't know why. I'm trying my best, but I cannot feel any improvement in my relationship with the Lord. The Lord Jesus Christ in today's gospel gave us a solution. In a word that he repeated twice when he was talking about the person who is willing or wanting to build a tower. He said, for which of you intending to build a tower does not sit down? For which of you intending to build a tower does not sit down first and count the cost. And also, he said, what king going to make war against another king does not sit down, does not sit down first and consider whether he is able with 10,000 to meet him or comes against him with 20,000. The key here that the Lord is giving to us a key for the kingdom of God a key for a better spirituality a key for a better relationship with him sit down sit down first unfortunately today the whole world is moving around us in a very very fast pace that people don't have time to sit down calm down, look around them, and assess their life. And when we talk to anyone, he would say, I'm just running around, trying to get my chores done, my job done, my commitments done. Okay, do you get a chance to sit down with the Lord to assess your life and your spirituality? Probably you say a quick prayer at night before you go to bed. But do you really take the time? I tell you something, as they say that, you know, great things come in little packages. That's the thing. You have a small key here for your spirituality. One little thing. But I tell you that that little package, that little thing, I tell you right now, is very, very very difficult to do. And I'm not talking here about something that's major. I'm talking about a very little thing, very small thing, just 10 minutes a day with you to sit down with the Lord. Just 10 minutes a day. And as small as, as that might sound, as it is very difficult to do, Be, but you know why? It's not because you don't have time. It's not because you are very busy. Because I'm sure that you have a lot more time that you spend, that you can spend on your FaceTime and social media, and phone calls and chatting with others and doing totally useless things. So you do have the 10 minutes and more. You do have that time. It's not because you are busy. So why it is very difficult? It's very difficult because of one simple reason 
because the devil is fighting it with all his power. He's fighting you with all his power not to have this 10 minutes, not to sit down with the Lord for 10 minutes. And sometimes when you force yourself to do it, he will do his best. Satan will do his best to spoil this 10 minutes. To get you anything to preoccupy your mind during this 10 minutes. And then you don't benefit from it. To benefit from it, you have to set aside a place and a time. And you say, this is my quiet time place. And this is my time. I will leave my phone away. I will close my door. I will not answer any calls for the time being. I will close the door of my room and I will be with God. I will sit down with God for 10 minutes. Then it comes <clears throat> the most important thing. What are you going to do in this 10 minutes? Simple thing. Put yourself before the Lord. Ask the Lord Jesus Christ to search your heart. Tell him a short prayers that you can memorize from Psalm 139, the last two verses in Psalm 139. Tell God, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxiety and see if there is any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Psalm 139, verse 23 and 24, the last two verses in this psalm. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxiety. And see if there is any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Ask God to search you. This 10 minutes is not a prayer time. It's not a Bible reading time. It's not even a meditation time. This 10 minutes, the key for your spiritual life and improving your relationship with God is 10 minutes of self-searching. 10 minutes of allowing God to shed his light on your heart, on your life, on your mind, on your thoughts, and search all of this in the light of God. Search all of you in the light of the Holy Spirit and find where is the problem. Search your day. Many people do this process only once a year and they come up with a list of resolutions for the new year. No, you don't do it once a year. You don't do it once a month. You don't do it once a week. You do it once a day that I told you. Great things come in little packages. 10 minutes a day, that little time is able to change your life 180 degrees. This 10 minutes of sitting down with the Lord searching your day can change your life entirely. If you are so sincere to sit down 10 minutes with yourself and ask yourself, what did I do today? Try to examine every single word you said during that day, every single action, every single thought. Put yourself openly in front of God and ask him to search you and to search your heart. And be very honest. Be very honest with yourself. If there is something wrong, let's face it, it is wrong. And it will never be right unless we correct it. So when you find a shortfall, a problem, an action that you did, which you discovered in this 10 minutes sitting with God, that it is wrong, don't try to justify it. Don't try to justify yourself saying, well, that was beyond my ability, or this person said this, this, and that to me, so I lost my temper. Well, I'm a human being after all. Then we just fail right there. 
We shouldn't find justifications for our wrong actions. We should be very sincere with ourselves, saying that was wrong and I, and I should correct it. So let's be honest with ourselves and see ourselves in the mirror of God. God gave us his commandment. God gave us light to our way in this world. God gave us his Bible. Let's measure our actions and our deeds based on this absolute truth that God gave us, the Bible and his commandments. Many of us, when we search our heart and assess our deeds, we refer to others, wrong references. We refer to the society, another wrong references. We refer to time that we are living in, a third wrong reference. Our absolute truth and our absolute reference is the word of God, the Bible. It's the only light, everything else is in darkness. So I come to this time when I search myself and I find a wrong action that I did today at work. Then I tell myself, oh, well, listen, uh, but everybody does that. Like, uh, I don't see it to be very wrong. Everybody is doing it, so let go. No. When I find something that I did wrong, I face it. I face reality. And I apologize to God. I repent. That's why they call it the life of repentance. Because the life of repentance is a continuous process that we do every single day. Repentance is not something that I do once a day or once a, a, a week or once a month or once a year. Repentance I do every moment in my life. That's why it's called the life of repentance. It's like uh, the beat of my heart or breathing. It's something that I have to do continuously. This is the life of repentance. Not when I meet with my father of confession. Not when I uh, uh, repent at the end of the year before uh, the new year. It is something that I do continuously. And because it's something I have to do continuously, I have to search myself continuously on daily basis. So today I discovered wrong things that I did today. So tomorrow is a new day, a new opportunity from God to live the life of repentance. So I will watch every single action I do tomorrow. So I protect myself from the sins that I was the victim of yesterday. That's how I improve my spirituality day after day. Also, when I find a problem in the 10 minutes sitting down with the Lord, and I face it, and I admit it, and I recognize it as a problem or as a sin, I should also never postpone rectifying consequences of this problem. For example, if I today made someone angry, or uh, lost my temper with someone, or I committed a, a gossip sin against someone, or I said something I should be saying to someone, I have to rectify the problem right away so my life of repentance is completed. After I finish the 10 minutes sitting with God, I pick up my phone, call this person and apologize. Call my wife and apologize. Go and talk to my children in their bedroom and apologize. Nothing wrong with apologies. Nothing wrong, as a matter of fact, when you apologize, you teach your children that you recognize your mistakes and your shortfalls as well. Nothing wrong with that. As a matter of fact, it's a lot better for you to confess this problem and they see you an example of someone who rectifies the problem rather than someone who makes mistakes all time and deny those mistakes and hide them under the carpet. Let's face them and let's change and let's rectify consequences as well, if there is any. When I sit down with God 10 minutes, I search my heart. How is my prayers when it comes to quantity and quality? Not only to uh, search my heart, when it comes to sins, but also sins uh, search my heart 
when it comes to virtues, prayers, patience, long suffering, all the virtues that I ought to build in myself, I search my heart, see how good I am on those virtues. Am I improving or going backwards? And if I find one of the virtues or one of my practices like prayers or confessions lack honesty or lack quality, I put in my like uh, resolutions or I put on my plans to do to correct this. I put it in my prayers to God. Tell God in my prayers, after I finish the 10 minutes, I have to stand and pray a short prayer. Put all my findings before the hands of God or in the hands of God, telling him that what your spirit found in me in the process of searching my heart, now I'm handing to you. I'm handing to you all the findings because I cannot do it myself. I need your power. I need your help to rectify all these problems. Then God will help me. So I tell him, in this seating, dear Lord, you found a shortfall in me. You found lack of commitment in my service. You found lack of commitment in my uh, duties with the family or my parents or my children or whatever my friends, people who depended on me, people who counted on me, I found this problem, dear Lord, help me to correct it. When I sit down in this 10 minutes seating, I search my heart, what is the quality and what is the value of me and my existence in my society and in the church? Am I a peacemaker or a troublemaker? I searched my heart. What did I do today? Was I a peacemaker? This situation that I was called upon it, and they asked my opinion. What I said, did it pre prevent a problem or cause the problem? What I said, did I make people to hate one another more or to reconcile with one another? Was I a tool in the hands of God for reconciliation and peace, or I was a tool in the hands of Satan in problems and trouble making. When I sit down in the 10 minutes, I search my words. What did I say today? Mind you, we will give an account for every idling word we say. And today, in today's era, with te today's technology, those words are not only oral words or verbal words. We speak all the time via social media, and Facebook, and other things. What did I say today on my social media? What I said today, did it make people angry? Did it make people peaceful? Did it make people jealous of me? I, I really get surprised when people post on their folks. I, I canceled my Facebook, by the way, because I was so fed up with it. As people just post so irrelevant things. Someone went to a vacation, and he's posting his vacation on Facebook. Well, who cares? You went to your vacation. Enjoy your vacation. Why do you want the whole world know that you went to this expensive vacation? Don't you notice that many people can feel bad about this? That many children can envy your children, seeing your children enjoying their time on the beach while they cannot afford to go there? When someone just uh, uh, make a party, a birthday party or a wedding party or whatever, and they post on Facebook all details, all the details. You had an event, just put a post on the event, just a small post, so your friends would know about it. And that's about it, end of the story. But to post a hundred pictures for all the details of the food and the banquet hall and the dresses, the dresses that you, you, you bought and the outfit that you bought and expensive things that you used in this um, event. What, what are you doing? You're making other people look at you, feel bad about themselves, feel bad about they cannot afford what you can afford. 
You are burning the heart of many people who can't even afford such a birthday or a wedding. Never mind the luxurious life that you are living. Just calm down. You don't have to show off every action, everything you do. Some people just take pictures of themselves in a hospital, on a bed in a hospital and put it in a Facebook. What is this? What does that mean? What does that mean? Like you, you want people just to feel pity for you or why? Why are you doing such a thing? Things that you cannot really explain rationally at all. And think about all of this. This is just idling actions. You know idling means what? Useless. Before I say anything, before I post anything, I ask myself a question. Is this building anyone? Is this adding glory to God? Is this edifying a friend of mine or a family member or someone who would see? Or it's useless for anyone but creating problems and creating issues that shouldn't be created. I search myself through the help of God when I sit 10 minutes with God to search my thoughts and my actions throughout the day. If we sincerely do this every single day, I guarantee you, no, God guarantees you, that your spiritual life will change dramatically. It's difficult, I'm warning you, it is difficult to do because Satan fights so hard for you not to do that. But if you can conquer this battle and sit with God 10 minutes a day in the self-search and rectification of all the actions of the day and correction for everything you did, you will find that the following day 100% is better than today. And then the following day will be better than tomorrow. And then the following day will be better than the day before. And so on and so forth. May God give us a beautiful fast period. And we can start this process during this uh, fast period as a test period. And I'm sure that if you are faithful and honest and doing it, God will bless us, bless our lives. Glory be to God forever and ever. Amen.